Welcome to another restoration series. Ketron's radio service here, bringing to you a restoration of a 1937 K-Part 405E. This is a Model 400 produced in 1937 by the K-Part Corporation. It is a cabinet style number 5, which was also called the Chippendale. And it's with the E-Series Electronics, which was produced in 1937. It was K-Part's second year for bi-amplification and also their first year for the K-Part 500. This being a 400 is one model below the top end for 1937. This just came in from a fellow collector who has heard that I specialize in K-Parts, mainly pre-war K-Parts that is, and he brought his K-Part all the way up from Alabama. So we have the cabinet before us, all the electronics, the record player, the speakers, everything is here on site. We're going to do a full restoration from start to finish. I've done quite a few 1937 400Es at this point, so I'm very familiar with the circuitry and also the overall layout of how K-Part had their 400 in 1937. So the cabinet, which very well could have been restored, uh, at least the wood finish that is, in uh, the 1970s or 80s or even before. We don't really know when the cabinet finish was restored, but it was done rather well. And you could see uh, the wood effect here on the front panels, as well as the uh, toning done around the doors. So we're going to take a closer look. Like I said, this was the Chippendale cabinet. A very popular cabinet, very ornate door pulls. Here we have the dial for the 400 model, 1937. This is an all-wave set, a rather complicated set, and one of K-Part's finest made before World War II. Here you can see we have four bands on the dial. Uh, this machine has last been serviced maybe the 1970s, 80s, or 90s. It was last played in the 1990s. Uh, the gentleman who owns this machine had seen it played once before in the 1970s. From then on, he said he had to have one, and he actually ended up with his very machine years later after hearing it for the first time in the 1970s. So the 1937 E lineup was a uh, very high-performance lineup Cape had for the 1937 year. So we have our tuner off to the right. Lid lifts up to the... Fabulous record changer. This is the K-Part 16E record changer. The only record changer which was patented in the 1930s to be able to automatically flip records. So you could hold 16 to 18 records here, uh, whether it be 10 inch or 12 inch, 78s. And uh, it just play through them for four hours and it keep playing through them until uh, you wanted it to stop. So we have the earlier black style uh, changer with the metal head shell. This is magnetic, so we will be rebuilding this. We will be going through the entire changer from head to toe, top to bottom. We have our lift ring right here. Right now I have it in repeat mode, which is the only mode you can have it in in order to move this manually. You got to watch out and make sure that it clears the tone arm. So there's our changer, which is the finest automatic changer 1930s had to offer, which is exclusively patented by K-Part. And that gave K-Part a leading edge when it came to sales for those that wanted to play records. Down here we have the speaker cabinet, or the speaker compartment. Original grill cloth there. Like I said, this machine was most likely refinished at some point long long time ago is done rather well if it was indeed refinished and what kind of gives that away if you look here the k-part deluxe you can see as somebody taped over it and this is something that the owner mentioned to me he brings up a great point most likely it was refinished at some point now a rather odd feature we have two really odd features. Number one, here in the record cabinet, we have this 
ignition switch or what appears to look like some sort of switch that we would put a key in and turn. We'll discuss that soon, but that's a very important thing that uh, this is the second machine I've seen with that. The first machine being um, the K part 500 right back here. That also has an ignition switch or a lockout switch in the record compartment. This is the second, ma second machine I have seen with this. That leads me to believe that Kpart offered this as a feature or a customization at the dealer. Perhaps this was in a club and they didn't want people turning on the machine or turning it off. And um, maybe uh, it was used in a public facility which is possible, or maybe the owner just wanted that way because he had a bunch of kids running around at home, didn't want them turning on, who knows. The second feature is another lock out here. You can see a lock right here, and on the inside you can see where that engages and disengages right here in this insert. I know a gentleman who has a K-Part 500 the Empire cabinet, just like the one here we have behind us. He also has the same feature, which leads me to believe that K-Part would allow the customer to customize however they wanted. Two very interesting features that this K-Part has, that being the lock on the front, the lock inside. That lock would originally go to the power source, the power AC power line, and that would be your interlock or your lockout. So if you wanted somebody to um, not manipulate the machine, you would have a key. You'd have to have a key to turn on the K part. So it was a, uh, I guess, a lockout for people that weren't supposed to be inside. Very pretty on the front. Here's the side. It's very ornate here on the top. Let's go around the back here, which is rather poor lighting, but the original screens are still on the back here. They have never been removed. And like I said, this machine was last serviced in the 1990s. So it has been in, been in a long hibernation. Anyhow, let's go ahead and turn the console around and take a look at the back.